Hello and welcome to the studio where we paint away the stress of everyday life. Yes, well it's a new year and um, I thought I would paint on something slightly bigger today. A bigger a bigger bit of cardboard. Uh, I love cardboard as you know. Uh, but you can paint on canvas panels, canvas, anything you want really. Um, as long as it's uh, not too shiny or too greasy. But there are ways of doing that. Hey welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget but to without further ado, let's have a look at the colours that I've got on the palette today. I've got some peppermint green, which is a very light green. It's a hooker's green that I've I've lightened with some yellow and put some white to it. So I made a batch of that up. But you can buy that colour. It's a bit like a pepperminty green. Um, I've got some hooker's green, um, which is a dark green. I got some um, cadenan yellow, and I got some yellow ochre. I got some uh, dioxine purple, some um, primary blue, some white, and some burnt umber. Now, just use those colours. You know, if you haven't got all those colours, just use something that's approximate. You don't need to have exactly what I'm that I've got there. I'm taking the liberty of drawing out uh, a seal. Because um, I thought I would do something like an underwater scene today. And, and, I, and I'm quite aware that a lot of people can't really draw. So if you if you trace that onto a bit of cardboard, and I thought it would be a bit of fun today if I did two ways of getting that image onto there. I, could, I cut around it. So I got a stencil, which I could use. I've also got a picture. So I can, I can, my cutout, I can position wherever I want to see roughly where it would look better. So yeah, we're gonna play around with that after, but I wanna get the background in first. So I'm going to get some white, some white and some peppermint green. There we go. White and peppermint green, just like that. I wanna put a nice bright spot in, just like that. It's my glow. Nice glowy colour. There we are. I want a, I want a very, very, very pale glow there, like that. Now, as I come out, I'm just going to darken that up a little bit more. Let's get a little bit of hooker's green to it, just to darken it a touch. There we go. Just to darken it a touch like that. Don't forget, this is going to be um, a bit of a an underwatery scene that I'm trying to create today. So we want that glow to come. So this is going to be the surface of the water, or sort of surface of the water. So we want it slightly darker up there, like that, because we want to create some sort of depth in the painting. So we need it just slightly blue. Uh, just slightly darker, I mean. Actually, blue. No, I mentioned I mentioned blue, didn't I? I didn't. Uh, I just did that without without thinking about it. Perhaps we could put some blue in the green. Let's get a touch of this blue. It's just in the top of that water area there. Just a small touch. Just like that. A little bit of moisture, just using tap water today. Just tap water. Back into a, a lighter green, a bit more white. And just play, just take your time. Just play and take your time. Let's get a little bit of white. A bit of light coming through. There, like that. I think 
think that's looking pretty good. It's looking watery like, I think. I had this idea the other day um, as I was eating my mince pies and having a glass of wine. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun if we did, did some sort of underwater type of scene. So I'm just going to get some of this blue now and some white. mix that in like that you can see I'm using my paints quite thinly and if you're having trouble with uh, acrylics which a lot of people do when they first start um, painting on cardboard is a brilliant way to to get yourself ready um, for canvases and things because using acrylics on canvas I'm just using some brown now um, this is burnt umber just using uh, acrylics on canvas and other substrates you'll find that it's a different animal altogether because with um, painting on cardboard like there's sheets of cardboard um, you can open up a cereal packet that type of thing and you can open up a cereal packet I'm just putting some wispy things just in like this it'll all be relevant in a second um, you'll find that because the the paint absorbs into the cardboard it's a little bit more forgiving especially for beginners um, I'm just going to get some burnt ember and I'm adding a little bit of the dioxazine purple or make, or make a purple make a purple if you want it's just going to be a, a different type of color that we need to add in just like that just a little bit of depth you can see I'm creating that that depth by putting some shadows in the front like this very very lightly very lightly painting I'm not working too hard you can see that I'm not working I'm not working too hard at this I'm just using the, the paint To my advantage there we go so we've already got a, a sort of um, underwater scene looking quite nice there I think so I'm now gonna find myself um, a little script liner brush now a script liner brush is a very thin if I can find the thing it's a very thin brush that um, they used as one. They use for doing riggings on trees, and um, they're quite useful brushes. There's my favourite one there. They're quite useful brushes for doing leaves and branches and stuff like that. So we need some of this light green again. I'm just adding a little bit more water to it. There we are. Let's get a bit of white over there. And. I'm just going to put in a few distant this is all in the distance a few I don't know what that is it could be um, seaweed and stuff like that couldn't it it could be but that's all we're trying to do is just put some different effects in maybe like that And this is just going up to the surface and just floating on the surface like that there we go you get the idea so you can do as much of this or as little as this as you want so we just get our brush now and just brush that away like that you can see this is still a little bit damp on my cardboard which is good we want to increase the strength of that color now so we're going up to a darker a darker tone now and we're just going to wiggle in some you could say these are like branches on trees you know it's just bits of weed grass all that type of stuff there we go 
It's weed and grass and we just have fun. Just have fun. I can hear the rain drops falling down on the top of my studio today. And again, get the brush. Just bed them in like that. Shh. <laughs> so we've got some underwater. We've got some underwater um, leaves and things. I'm going to use this one now. So I'm going to get a bit of this dioxazine purple. Um, there we are, some burnt umber. Dioxazine purple, burnt umber. I'm going to slap some green into that as well. I want to get some green in there. I'm going to lighten that just a touch. Just a small touch on the one side. Like this. And what are we going to do now? We're going to... Put an almighty lump of entwined whatever this is. <laughs> it could be anything, can it? Because it's it's all twisted and bent around each other, and it's got all this stuff coming out of it this could be a tree couldn't it you could be doing this quite easily as a landscape but at the moment we're just doing this underwater so it's one of them things like this it's got all these weeds and that coming out of it Let's just bear that in just like that we we'll put some rocks there in a second let's just get this horrible old lump of seaweed just pop in its head and it's going up to the surface of the water and it's everywhere there we go it's everywhere and we get some of our light green now i might put a bit of that in there as well like this just to give it a bit of light it could be a it's just a tangled mess and you could have fun you can enjoy yourself just by creating your seaweed seascape like this it's just a tangled mess like that there we go how easy is that and then we can get our brush again get some green get some nice dark green Bit of that bit of that let's get some purple there and we put some mess on the ground this is all like rocks and and all that type of stuff get some burnt ember don't worry about cleaning your brush why why worry why worry just get all these colours to merge. As long as you're not making mud. You know, we all we are painting mud, but you know what I mean. As long as you're not making a like a big mess of colour. You want you want you want some you want some greens and stuff and things coming in. Get some rocks on the ground. It's all rocks there. There we go, a little bit of this, light the colour. Let's have fun. My paintings are all about experimenting with brushes, colours, techniques. Like that. Brush that in, get some green into that. If it's too white like it is, just get some green, just put some little bits bits of pieces it do, do, I don't know what they are they could be anything there there we are all these little things in the ground under the sea we don't know we don't we don't look under the water do we we, we not we, you know it's a shame that we we can't I like snow I used to snorkel I used to go 
swimming under the sea and stuff like that. But you can see what I mean. We we're creating this wonderful, wonderful scene there. So what I want to do now is I'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer. We're going to put some fish in there then, and we're going to have a look at our seal. You can make wonderful, absolutely wonderful backgrounds just such as this. And um, I just want to put a, but I was going to put a few more lighter, um, light, lighter branches in. But we'll do that later because what I want to do now is I want to get some water there. That's like this. You can see my brush is a little bit dirty. But that's okay. I'm going to get some of this dioxazine purple. This is a very strong color. Very strong. Like ink. Like ink. But what I want to do is just put a, maybe, a very light wash of purple this over. You've got to be very careful that with this dioxazine purple, it can be quite strong. Just a tinge, just a tinge of, of colour. Just a tinge of colour, just a tinge of purple. Just a tinge. That's like that. So that purpley colour. Picked up a little bit of green there. That's okay too. There we are. We got that. It's just darkening that edge, and um, we could we could darken down here just a touch as well. Um, I am dry down here very well, so I'm not going to do that too much. But I'm just going to put a bit of purple. See. I'm just going to put a purple, bit of purple there. Um, I'm going to leave that because you can see that I didn't dry that very well. But I'm going to leave that. Anyway, just put a bit of purple in like that. Cool. And you can get a little bit of tissue paper. Just lightly, lightly, lightly. And let's get our brush again now. Let's go into some of this, this lighter colour. And let's just put a few... Like the, a little bit of white, I think. There we go. There's a few little stringy bits and pieces. I mean, put some. Little lights marks like that. There we go. <laughs> Let's get our little fishies. So we're just going to use a dark color. I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my brush for this. I'm just going to go like this. Look, I'm going to go up. Doesn't matter what look what they look like. What I want you to do is to be able to create your own scene. And don't do what I do, but just learn and experiment with the little techniques that I show you. So you don't need a lot of detail there. They're, they're quite, um, you can see they're quite simple little marks that I've done there. But that's all you need, really. What shape is a fish? A fish isn't a fish isn't always like um, a fish isn't always like this. It hasn't got a tail. It comes around. There's all different shapes of fishes. All different shapes of fishes. There you go. My paintings are all about having fun and experimenting and you can do really detailed paintings if you want to um i'm gonna do loads of different fishes and stuff like that let's have a look at our our seal so where should we put our seal we could put him there he's just going to be surfacing up maybe or we could put him there in front or we could have put him over there we could decide now we can either draw around him if we wanted to or we can just get our cardboard that we've cut out and we'll say we'll put him 
put him there like that and then we can get our, our little brush and let's get some let's get some burned umber and we could just try and stipple him in place like this making sure that we get we don't go underneath the a stencil but it's just just a fun way just a different way of creating an image on the canvas and I think the more we have fun the more we experiment with our paintings the more experienced we become we make a lot of mistakes and I've made so many mistakes over the years but I just enjoy creating very quick paintings like this because the majority of the time I paint I can I paint for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours just to create one painting but what I love about YouTube is the ability to create um, lessons like this that anybody can paint and I mean anybody can do this and I don't want to make my my lessons um, over complicated um, at all for that so what we need to do now we need to get I'm, I'm, I, I should put some black on my thing but I'm just going to get some dioxine purple burned umber and hopefully a little bit of green and hopefully that will make myself a nice dark colour let me just paint him in there's his little fin Actually, I think I might actually put some black on the on you now in a minute. I'm just going to paint him in first, just block him in a bit. Let me just create this shape that I need. Spending a little bit of time on him. Or oh, her? It could be a little girl, couldn't it? Could be. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to dry that with a hairdryer. I'm going to put a bit of black on my palette. Cameras. Okay, so I dried that off. I put some um, black onto my palette just before I switch the cameras back on so I thought I'm just clean that brush I'm, just, I'm quite a messy painter <laughs> I'm quite a messy painter so what I thought I'd do is get some of this yellow ochre now and just put a little bit of sand or something there like that I don't know how that looks, but it looks as if it's just maybe just catching the light a little bit. Getting some things like this. There's little bits of just whatever they are, just catching the light a little bit there. I felt that it needed uh, something just to lift there. A lot of mess and stuff. Right, let's get our black. A little bit of moisture. And this just always. I 
that's just flipper coming out like that. The seal is a black, I think. Is that the flipper? It's most probably there, I would imagine. So we don't need to paint that so much. We're just thinking of how this light is going to be catching this seal's body as he's swimming through the water. There we go. I'm just going to Because not every time we paint, everything has to be perfect. We paint. A lot of people that follow me, a lot of people follow me just paint for painting's sake. They don't paint to sell their, their works or nothing like that. But some of them, some of them have gone on to just painting for pleasure and starting to sell stuff which is wonderful absolutely wonderful um i think it's wonderful because when i see their works and i got a few different um facebook groups and things when i see what people have done when i see what people have done It really makes me happy to think that possibly I've had something to do to help them. Understand what they're capable of. A lot of people think that, there's a lot of people who think that they can't paint. And a lot of people are scared to pick up a paintbrush and and try and there's a lot of people that have painted for many many years and stopped painting for whatever reason and I think it's nice to see these people eventually picking up their paintbrush again and because there's a lot of mental health issues in the world today it's not only good to talk to people and I use this a lot as therapy myself to enable me to reach out to people worldwide and I get texts and I get comments and things like that and people reach out and it's done me no end of good and if I can give a little bit of that if I can give a little bit of that back in the lessons that I do, then I made myself really happy and I, by making others happy I get pleasure as well. So there we are. There's a nice there's a nice seal of sorts there. Now you could take this on, you could you could put another glaze of purple or something on that. You could you could just play with that. There's a couple of little fishes there in the background. They don't need they don't need marks basically. There's nothing special about those fish. And um and it doesn't need to be. Does it need to be? Because artwork is meant to be looked at from a distance. So yeah, and I've learned that one a lot, actually. So there's a little seal in an underwater scene. Have a go. See what you can come up with. See if you can create something. Have a bit of fun with some stencils. Have a bit of fun just playing around and putting some images on paint. And I'm sure 100% that you could do a much, much better job than I have just done there in the short space of time that I've had. But don't forget, these paintings could be taken on the bigger canvases and more detail and a lot more fun. I could have increased the brightness there just a touch maybe, but I'm happy with that as the lesson goes. So thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you as the year progresses. Bye.